The term ocular hypertension typically refers to any situation in which the pressure inside of the eye is higher than normal. Ocular hypertension is not considered a disease by itself, but it can lead to a condition known as glaucoma. To understand how glaucoma develops, we must first understand how fluid circulates within the eye. Fluid is produced inside of the eye by a structure known as the ciliary body. This structure is located just beneath the iris. The fluid then travels through the pupil and exits via the eye's drainage system called the trabecular meshwork. In a healthy eye, there is a normal balance between the fluid that is made in the eye and the fluid that leaves the eye. Therefore, this fluid creates a relatively constant and healthy pressure within the eye. This pressure is needed to keep the eye inflated, nourished, and functioning properly. This is what we mean by the eye pressure, and your eye doctor measures it routinely. On its own, ocular hypertension does not cause damage to vision. This condition must be monitored carefully and in some cases treated with topical eye medications. If your doctor feels that you are at low risk of developing glaucoma in the next several years, then eye medications may not be necessary. Since ocular hypertension may increase the risk of developing glaucoma, Routine eye exams by an eye care professional are recommended to assess the eye's overall health. Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases that cause damage to the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the part of the eye that carries the images we see to the brain. Glaucoma is often called the silent thief of sight, gradually stealing vision without warning and often without symptoms. If left untreated, glaucoma can lead to blindness. It was once thought that elevated pressure inside the eye was the main cause of optic nerve damage. Although elevated pressure is clearly a risk factor, we now know that other factors must also be involved because even people with normal pressure can experience vision loss from glaucoma. You may be at risk of developing glaucoma and not even know it. Glaucoma is one of the most common causes of blindness, and therefore everyone needs to be aware of this disease. However, certain people are at a greater risk of developing this disease than others. These include people over the age of 40, individuals who are severely myopic or nearsighted, people who have diabetes, people diagnosed with hypertension, long-term steroid or cortisone users, people of African or Mediterranean descent, people who have family members with the disease, individuals who have experienced a serious injury or trauma to their eye, those who have high intraocular pressure and people with enlarged optic nerves. Glaucoma is a highly detectable disease. It is essential that high-risk glaucoma patients have annual eye examinations to ensure continued ocular health. There are many different tests that doctors may perform to monitor for glaucoma. One test a doctor may perform is called ophthalmoscopy. During this test, the doctor observes the condition of the optic nerve through a special microscope. If necessary, your doctor may also use a special camera to take photographs of your eye for future comparison. Another test that may be performed is called tonometry. This test measures for the presence of elevated pressure inside of the eye, a key risk factor for glaucoma. 
The thickness of the cornea can influence the results of a tonometry test. So a doctor may measure the cornea by performing a test called pachymetry. Knowing the thickness of the cornea can help the doctor more accurately interpret pressure within the eye. A doctor may perform a gonioscopy test. During this test, the doctor observes the angle of the eye where fluid is supposed to drain to see if there is any blockage or closure that may elevate pressure within the eye. Patients may also be given an interactive test called a visual fields test to detect vision loss due to glaucoma. During this test, patients look straight ahead and indicate when they see a spot of light appear in their visual field. Spots that go unnoticed during this test may indicate areas of vision loss. Another test that may be performed measures your optic nerve using computerized imaging devices. These devices scan the area of the optic nerve, providing highly detailed images of the optic nerve and surrounding tissue. This test can help doctors identify and treat glaucoma far in advance of previous technologies. Doctors may perform one or all of these tests on a patient, depending on their risks of developing glaucoma and the condition of their eyes. Performed regularly, these tests provide an eye doctor with the information needed to effectively treat glaucoma and prevent vision loss. Primary open angle glaucoma occurs when the drainage channels are open but do not drain fluid properly. In order to maintain a healthy balance, the eye has a built-in drainage system. Primary open angle glaucoma occurs due to a deeper issue that impacts the eye's natural drainage system. The eye's drainage system works like a sink. If a blockage develops or if fluid is produced faster than it can escape, an overflow will occur. In the eye, this overflow causes the pressure to elevate. The optic nerve is the structure most vulnerable to damage from elevated pressure. Continuous elevated pressure or spikes in pressure can damage the optic nerve. A small percentage of people with glaucoma have a condition known as narrow angle glaucoma. This type of glaucoma can occur slowly and progressively or very quickly and can only be detected through a comprehensive eye exam. Narrow angle glaucoma usually occurs in farsighted people because they tend to have anterior chambers that are smaller than normal. In cases of narrow angle glaucoma, the iris can bow forward, thinning the angle that normally drains the eye. As the angle becomes smaller, fluid backs up and pressure in the eye, or intraocular pressure, begins to rise. If narrow angle glaucoma is not diagnosed and treated, it can cause loss of vision. In some cases, Narrow angle glaucoma can lead to an emergency condition known as angle closure glaucoma. In cases of angle closure glaucoma, the iris may bow forward so much that it cuts off your eye's angle completely. Unlike narrow angle glaucoma, where some fluid can still drain from the eye, angle closure glaucoma does not let any fluid drain. It develops quickly and its symptoms can include severe pain red eye, and nausea. Closed angle glaucoma is a medical emergency. If the high pressure is not reduced within hours, it can permanently damage your vision. If you experience any of these symptoms, you should immediately contact your eye doctor or go to a hospital emergency room. Secondary glaucoma occurs as a result of another disease or injury that causes or contributes to an increase in the eye's intraocular pressure. Secondary glaucoma may be caused by an eye injury, inflammation, a tumor, certain drugs such as steroids, and advanced cases of cataracts or diabetes. Pseudo-exfoliation syndrome is a condition that is caused by tiny flakes that build up in the front of the eye. This fibrillar material is deposited on the lens of the eye and also in the trabecular meshwork of the eye, where the fluid drains out. In some patients, this can block the outflow of the fluid in the eye. 
raising the eye pressure and causing glaucoma. Not all people with pseudo-exfoliation syndrome develop glaucoma. It is common for one eye to develop this condition earlier than the other eye, but both eyes are at risk for glaucoma if pseudo-exfoliation material is present. If you have pseudo-exfoliation syndrome, your chances of developing glaucoma are about six times higher than people who do not have it. Juvenile glaucoma, also referred to as congenital glaucoma, occurs in babies and young children and is usually diagnosed within the first year of life. Juvenile glaucoma is a rare condition caused by incorrect development of the eye's drainage system before birth. This leads to increased intraocular pressure which can damage the optic nerve and lead to blindness. Early detection through regular and complete eye exams is the key to protecting vision from damage caused by glaucoma. There are a number of treatment options available that are designed to slow down or stop damage to the eye that is caused by glaucoma. While vision that has already been lost due to glaucoma cannot be recovered, these treatments can stop vision loss from getting worse. Your eye care professional may suggest medicated eye drops, a laser procedure, or a surgical procedure to treat glaucoma. These treatments all have a common goal, to lower pressure inside of the eye and prevent further damage to the optic nerve. Prescription eye drops lower pressure inside of the eye. By decreasing the amount of fluid the eye produces, or by helping fluid leave the eye more easily. Laser procedures can lower eye pressure by relieving blockage in the drain mechanism of the eye. In some cases, lasers are also used to create new drainage channels inside the eye when there is an obstruction to the normal flow of fluid. Surgical procedures lower eye pressure by creating an opening in the wall of the eye so the fluid can easily escape. Another surgical approach is to implant a tube called a shunt to channel fluid out of the eye. Your treatment plan will depend on the type of glaucoma you have, how far it has advanced, and your general health. Your eye care professional will determine the best approach for you.